In the foothills of the Himalayas, people have gathered from all over the world to witness the cremation ceremony of a high Tibetan Lama, Chagdug Tulka Rinpoche. Chagdug Tulka Rinpoche was among the Tibetan Buddhist teachers who fled their country after the Chinese communist invasion in 1959. After many years spent as a refugee in India and Nepal, he traveled to the United States and then to Brazil, where he built the first Tibetan temple on the continent, part of a network of centers that he dedicated to Tibetan Buddhist teaching and practice. Chagdug Tulku Rinpoche, known simply as Rinpoche to his students, was the first Tibetan master to fully ordain Western women as lamas. Among them was a young American called Jane Dedman, who fell in love with Rinpoche after meeting him in Nepal in 1978 and became his wife, taking the name Chagdud Kadro. It was love at first sight. Rinpoche was the last of the great bohemians and I was the last of the petty bourgeoisie. I was always cleaning house or trying to tidy things up or he was really big. He didn't like to say it, but he's the 16th recognized Chagdud Toko. Toko is uh, the incarnation of a Lama. A Lama can have many emanations and more than one Toko. This has been a particularly magnificent lifetime in a degenerate time. It's against all odds. He had a dream that said he should go to America, and at that point, he didn't know where America was. inspired confidence. He used to say, keep going. He would come in, oh, Rinpoche, I'm having all this trouble and all these thoughts, you know, keep going. Finally, the door had opened and he'd say, keep going. <laughs> he just pushed through phenomena. It was a, uh, a solid reality for him. Sometimes I would lay in bed next to him and think, where is your mind? You know, who are you? A psychic once said to Rinpoche, you're having a great old time pretending you're in that body. Rinpoche died from heart failure at his temple in Brazil on the 17th of November, 2002. He died an extraordinary death remaining seated in a meditation position for six days after he was clinically dead, but before his consciousness had finally departed from his body. This is considered an achievement of only the highest and most spiritually realized Tibetan masters. It was decided to take his body from Brazil to Nepal and wait a full year before his cremation. This gave his students from around the world time to make plans to travel to Nepal for the ceremony.
Among the high Tibetan lamas who gathered for Rinpoche's cremation was Kapje Jay Mokhtar Rinpoche, who presided over the ceremonies. He still has a monastery in the same remote region of Tibet where Rinpoche himself was from. Kudin is the honorific word for body. The body itself is maintained in a shrine during this past year. It was preserved in salt and camphor, in sandalwood and saffron. For all of us who've been as students, it's been a, a reference point. The mind is linked to th that body. The ceremony started on, on December 3rd, so there would be five days of ceremonies before the full moon, which was December 8th. The practice that we were doing was Vajrasattva, and the purpose of that practice is to purify any downfalls or regrets that we might have in terms of our connection with Rinpoche, and also to purify any obscurations and obstacles that might make it difficult for the easy transition of his toku. It's not just purification through mantra and visualization, but great offerings on all different levels, and it's very, very beautiful and extensive. The cremation ceremonies have been arranged by Rinpoche's children from his first marriage, his son, Jigmi Tramge Rinpoche, and his daughter, Dawa Lamo. Both of them now live in California. Rinpoche's grandson has been recognized as the incarnation of Dujim Jidra Yeshi Dorje. His name is Tuku Orjin. He's in a process of being trained by a very competent toku, and he is a thoroughly modern young man. He's 15 years old and good with computers and all the technology. And that might be an, a contribution that he's able to make in the future. Some of the Brazilian Sangha members, they've saved every penny for a year to be here. All of them simply want to be present at this moment in Rinpoche's cycles out of respect, out of appreciation, out of a sense of expectation of maybe some meditative realization. The wheel is broken, so one big truck is blocking the road. There are like 30 cars. Everybody's walking up. In the courtyard outside the temple, a kiln has been specially constructed for the cremation. A kiln is really a stupa. A stupa is a representation of enlightened mind. This morning situation is hectic. Car broke down, so everybody's nervous. <laughs> Here, <laughs> we are not together because uh, some of the main person they will, will be putting the shrine is in, in the bus. So now they are walking. So that's about it. <laughs> there are all these people walking up the road and each person's walk up the hill is probably symbolic of their path. I thought mine was walking downhill, going back trying to get up with this motorcycle, the thing breaks down, 
trudging along, trying to take a shortcut, falling on my face, then jumping in a car, getting a fast ride. <laughs> I was so moved by the devotion of all these students. Some of them walked uh, all the way. <laughs> Jimmy Overchay said that when he heard about the truck being in the road, he's really distressed. And then when people started arriving and they were in such good spirits, then he became really, really happy, thought it would all go well. And I got all the way to the front of the line, and then the half of the people push pop up on a shortcut. I just like ran the whole time, it was horrible. I ran at least half the way. Why did you run? You Because I wanted to be here first. Oh. And I was, the, I was here first on my bus, for sure. Yeah. It was Charlie Ribotray. Mm -hmm. he, he pulled up behind us on the hill, and I, I, said, I went to him and said, you know, we can't get up. And we're walking. And he said, no, no, it's really raffle. He said, we'll get up. I thought like he's the one who got it. all the buses up. Right time, yeah. <laughs> came up through the fields it was so beautiful, unbelievably beautiful, the morning sun coming up and all the people that wanted to do trekking got to do their trekking. Everybody wanted to ride up on the bus, got to ride up on the bus. And we all kind of arrived up here more or less at the same time. So it was really Rimp Chase, of, I could feel Rimp Chase amusement. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. There was an obstacle in the road and, and we, everybody overcame the obstacle. It was a complete delight. Thank you. Thank you. Sweetie? Yeah. <laughs> I lived in Ottawa 17 years. Six. But now I live Thank in Thank you. We've said goodbye in many ways to him, Jay, but this is really saying goodbye to him in, in the physical way that we knew him as his his physical presence and so for a lot of us it's uh you know it's, it's a, an emotional day but also it's it's time for us to make the transition and move on to Chase next body his his next being which which we're all looking forward to In the preparation for the fire puja, the lamas from Tontar and the Chetikampa Toko washed the body. They cleaned it of salt and then they wrapped it in silks. So when I went in and they said, come now, it's time to pay your last respects, I was expecting to stay at this shrine. And uh, instead, I saw Rinpoche wrapped. It was a discernible body wrapped in silk, and the face was wrapped with silk. And uh, he was still seated in meditation posture. People were circumambulated. That was a very moving experience, and especially for those people who hadn't been here in the 49-day ceremonies or hadn't been in Brazil and seen his kudun at that time, then it was very moving for them. I'm going to go.
body was lifted by the Chanto Lamas and some of the Western students and it was taken out and put in the top of a kiln with some difficulty actually because the kiln was quite high and the kudun was quite heavy. There's a lot of manipulation to, to place it in so it would be facing east. <laughs> the object of the cremation ceremony was a final offering of the various gifts one can give. Then the offering of one's body is considered one of the greatest offerings. <laughs> It was attended by four lamas from Tibet. In the ceremony, the four lamas said in the cardinal directions. In the west was Chapche Mukta Rinpoche. In the south was Chiling Rinpoche. In the east was Tramtar Shedro Rinpoche. And in the north was Chikinima Rinpoche. <laughs> Each lama led the ceremony at his own pace, and so there was a constant uh, sounding of conglings and jallings. It seemed like a great array and richness of sound. Dorje, Rukakundanga, Mojo, Jesus, and 
was placed on and then the lamas proceeded to do the the Vajrasattva ceremony just as we had done it before. Rinpoche's first wife, Karma Drama, she's a great woman. Mostly I feel a lot of respect and indebtedness because I don't think Rinpoche would have lived as long had it not been for her generosity and her perception. the four directions the each lama is uh, performing as uh, all of them are performing as a peaceful fire puja based on different sasadanas so now some of them might be finished uh, come to the fire puja place but then they have to wait for the, the main master which is a, the, his holiness called for Mozart mm -hmm. so now once he's ready so, so then, then they're all going to join into the ceremony of the fire puja then they will light the uh, fire to the uh, kudum to have all of these lamas present, and all of them are very great lamas, meant that the offering was complete, not only in terms of the substances, but in terms of the activities accomplished and the aspirations for those activities to be fulfilled. Then when Rinpoche's toko is to come back, then the ground is prepared with great merit and great intention. Offerings are offerings of grain, of oil, of uh, cloth, of kusha grass. Kusha grass is what the Buddha sat on when he attained enlightenment. 
Each offering is offered with a combination of the substance, which is very purely prepared, and then with mantra and mudra, and with the sounding of instruments. The Lama consecrates the offering and, and enhances it with mantra. And then the Chupan actually does the offering to the fire. The Chupan is the shrine keeper. They actually carry out the preparation of offering substances. They're like the Lama's hands. The Lama can't be jumping up and down to do this. The Chupan is an extension of the, the Lama's activity. There were four chippens, and then there were four chippens' assistants. So there was always a sequence of offerings going on. The fire is a purification of attachment. If something happens in the mind when you, you do fire puja. That form is illusory, really. He showed us that. But the final purification of that attachment is, is in the fire puja itself. As the fire burned, then there was just billowing smoke. We had this sense of inhaling Rinpoche. Watching it over a period of time, there was a moment of profound meditation for me when everything simply stopped. You know, all my fixations on the outer phenomena, on my emotions, on the static of my, my mind, everything just stopped. You know, there was a moment of just open awareness. I felt completely mingled with Rinpoche's presence. And it was very, very calm, very, very tranquil in that moment. As the ceremony draws to a close, the stupa is sealed to be broken open in a private ceremony some days later. And thank you offerings are made by the family to the visiting lamas and monks. Нет. 
Everything went very, very well. Everything went so beautiful. Ripochet, what he gave me more than anything else is the ability to love, is the ability to really open my heart and listen to what my heart is saying. Of the many things uh, Impoche taught us, some of the most remarkable were his total availability, his tirelessness, and his sense of humor also. He was really amazing the way he could use the perfect method for every moment. He was the epitome of kindness and compassion and love. Chakul Rinpoche is the biggest example of generosity for me in the daily life. He just went to any length to make sure that he kept his commitments, to make sure that he gave you every part of him that he could give. really simple things like getting up in the morning and just going in and saying hello to Rinpoche. I really miss that. I miss his voice. I miss his humor. His humor really enriched things. I miss the magic of his presence. Suddenly, after some hours, it just exploded into flame. And one of the lamas said, this is extremely good, that it's burning like this. It felt like Rinpoche's consummate generosity had been expressed through this offering of his body.